Well, this episode of Titans definitely brought home some hard-hitting drama. I'd say this is the most, like, dramatic episode of the show so far that I can recall off the top of my head. And it's all about the origins of Hawk and Dove. Both Hawk and Doves. You know, the original Hawk and Dove, you might not know if you don't read the comics, but the first Hawk and Dove were two brothers, Hank and Don Hall. And I've said that in a previous video, but because Hawk and Dove are such relatively obscure characters... And most people who watch, you know, superhero TV shows don't read the comics. I don't think a lot of people would have known that. They probably didn't know Hawk and Dove existed in the first place before they saw the show. And they wouldn't have known that there were basically two kind of different, you know, original versions of them. The first one's the two brothers, and then later on it's, you know, Hank and Don, the female Dove. And this episode, I felt, it definitely, you know, gave different versions of the characters. Because the origins in the TV show was completely different than the origins they got in the comics. But I felt that this episode, they really nicely, you know, did the origins of both Hawk and Dove teams pretty, you know, poignantly and well done. And, you know, they dealt with some pretty dark stuff. And, you know, Hawk, Hank, has always been in the comics, been the angrier, more... A lot of times, politically, too, they'd make him more conservative, too, in the comics. In the show, they don't really, like, go into that area. But just, he was a lot more, you know, hawkish, for lack of a better word, much more aggressive... You know, less compassionate and sympathetic towards the enemy. You know, more let's beat him up, more forceful. And in this show, you know, they dealt with where that... This episode, they dealt with where that came from. You know, with him being, you know, sexually assaulted, molested by his coach when he was younger. I don't know much about that. I don't know if when people are sexually assaulted, if one of the things it does is it makes them angry later on. Like, is that what... Because I felt like in the show they were saying that a reason that Hawk was so angry or disgruntled a lot of times, I think, or more aggressive or impulsive was because of what happened to him, the trauma when he was younger. And I didn't know that that was something that happened because of that. I'm not an expert on like psychology or anything like that. But I felt that that's what they were trying to say in the show. So I assume they researched that. And I guess maybe that's one of the symptoms of childhood sexual abuse is that you become angrier as you age or something. Um, so I guess, I don't remember, I don't think that had anything to do with Hulk in the comics. Or if it did, I must have missed that issue. But, you know, I thought it was cool how they did that. I mean, how, you know, they really went to try to tap into where that anger and, you know, his problems later on came from. And I thought they did that really well. And, you know, his brother, the more, you know, I guess, Dove was always supposed to be, I guess, the, so the more gentler, kinder one, I guess. And, you know, they didn't really give him, I think, anger problems. Well, I guess maybe they did because they both became vigilantes who beat up <laughs> people, you know, on their own. And I what I thought was interesting is how they you know, portrayed the early vigilante adventures of, you know, the brothers, you know, with them basically vlogging about, you know, beating up criminals in the night and apprehending them. And it reminded me of, I don't know if you remember a little while ago, there were these people in real life who would put on costumes and, you know, say they were superheroes and stuff. Like Phoenix Jones was one guy who did it. And they got, you know, sort of kind of, they became kind of celebrities sort of for doing that then it became trendy i think for people to you know put on costumes and become costume vigilantes it didn't last that long because you know i don't think you can really be a vigilante if you don't have powers because you could get shot or stabbed really easily <laughs> which is exactly what happened to hawk and dove in the second episode right when the nuclear family you know whooped them but anyways this is fiction so whatever that's what it reminded me of and it actually does make sense you know if you were a superhero and put on a costume and beat people up today and put it on YouTube, you could probably get a lot of followers and stuff. I mean, if you didn't get arrested. Because I also thought, you know, in real life, two guys who decide to put on costumes in the middle of the night and wander and beat people up, you know, that is kind of, you know, disturbing behavior if you think about it, which is probably why most people don't really do it that way. But, you know, how different is that from, I guess, what Batman does, right? Batman is, you know, quote, a regular human person, so to speak. He doesn't have powers. So he puts on a costume and goes out in the middle of the night and beats people up. And Hawk even mentions Batman in the episode, like, look out, Batman and Robin, here we are. So I guess he picked the right person to emulate, right, or to look up to him and his brother when they did that. So I thought that was interesting. I thought that it was an interesting commentary on real-life vigilanteism, the way we've seen it so far. If they were intending that, maybe, maybe I'm giving the writers too much credit, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were kind of going for that. And I thought it was cool how they also did Dove, the female Dove. Her origin is a ballerina with problems with her mother and she herself and her younger sister had problems with an abusive father 
And in the comics, there is another version of Hawk and Dove, which is the two sisters. I think in the New 52 or before that, they had two sisters. And, you know, one was Hawk and one was Dove. And I don't remember their names. And I'm wondering if this show... She said her younger sister was Holly on the show. If that was the name, if it was Dawn and Holly. I have to go back and reread the issues. But this show actually could be touching on three different versions of Hawk and Dove, then, not just two. So, you know, because her little sister, if you know this show goes on, I wonder if they'll try to make her like a new Hawk or a new Dove, you know, in like future episodes. If Hawk and Dove get their spinoff series or join the Titans later on. Because I don't think they would create, you know, Dove having a little sister and then not do anything with that character later on. But, you know, there was a juxtap, you know, both families, you know, both, you know, Dawn and her family and Hank and Dawn and, you know, the brother's family, they both had dealt with issues of violence in their youth being victims of violence and that maybe is what caused them to be in their own way violent vigilantes as adults and mo a lot of people might say you know even though hawk and dove i guess are heroes good guys i guess now but that's still not very psychologically healthy for you to become for you to put on a costume in the middle of the night and just go beat people up you know is that is that the best way to deal with your rage or is it i mean that's that's rhetorical but you know, I think, you know, the writers basically said that violence in the youth and sexual violence in Hank's case was a common thread in both Hank and Dawn and all three of them, both Doves and Hank in their childhoods. And, you know, that's what made them part of what made them who they were as adults, which, you know, made them become vigilantes. If they hadn't suffered those traumas, would they be, you know, Hawk and Dove as adults? Very interesting. And... You know, I think that's pretty intelligent and smart for the writer to do that, you know, and the way that they constructed this episode, the way it was directed and acted. I thought this was a very well done episode on a sophisticated drama kind of level. And, you know, the whole climax of when they, you know, I guess hunt down, when Dawn goes to confront the guy who, you know, assaulted Hank when he was younger and then it winds up in both Hank and Dawn, I think, like killing the guy in his house. You know, you could say that that was justice, that he deserved that, but, you know, was it, were they really, you know, taking the law into their own hands and killing a guy in his house? I assume they killed him, you know. Was that the right thing to do? I mean, they might, in real life, get arrested and be put in jail. So, you know, are they, crim they're criminals in a way, just like the people that they're beating up. So are they any better? I'm not trying to, you know, dog them. I'm just saying this episode, I think, raises those questions. And, you know, you could say you're on their side or maybe they could have handled it a different way, just turned him into the cops instead of beating him to death. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. But I think this episode, definitely the writing was very good. The directing, the acting was all very good. And I thought it was very sophisticated and made you think of a lot of stuff. Um, and you can draw your own conclusions. But well done. I think this elevates the show a lot. I mean, the show was already a good show. That's why I think the Titans turned out to be a lot better than a lot of people expected it to be. Especially, you know, you remember all the hate this show got when the costume leaks came out. But good job all around. Um, very, very great. And I can't wait for the next episode. The next two up, there's two episodes left before the season ends. And so bring them on. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please like it on YouTube and subscribe to the channel because I appreciate your viewership and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.